Hello, everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. It is Sunday, April the 5th. Today is video number 13, the maple leaf block. Today we're making a 12 inch block. We're using two colors, but you could add more colors to your maple leaf if you wanted to do that. That's what we're doing today. You should be able to see that up on the screen. If you haven't already cut out your pieces, you have a minute to do that. Today we're making some simple half square triangles. Your seven by seven inch pieces, there's two of them with stars next to them. If you wanna cut those at eight by eight and then trim down your half square triangles, you're more than welcome to do that. Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning, it's so great to see you. Yes, it is Palm Sunday, April the 5th. This is our 13th quilt block. My design wall is starting to fill up behind me. That's exciting. <laughs> Make sure to stay tuned to the end of today's video because I'm gonna show you the pieces and the block that we're doing tomorrow. Hello, everybody. So great to see y'all. Today's block is super duper simple. I'm gonna even show you a simple way to make the little stem in the bottom right hand corner of this block. You're not gonna believe how easy that is. So I'm gonna give you a minute to get yourself situated, grab a snack or your lunch or a drink and come hang out with me for a little bit. If you're sewing along with me live, go ahead and set your machine to a quarter inch seam allowance and warm up your iron, get that ready. I made a sample block. This is the block that we're making today. <laughs> That's really fun, right? Imagine doing this block with fall colors. Wouldn't that be stunning? That would be stunning. Let me show you what this quilt looks like repeated if you make this block and repeat it all through your quilt this is what it would look like i think that's pretty fantastic hello everybody it's so great to see you i hope you're having a fantastic day i'm going to give everybody a minute to come on in and get situated i have one two three four five questions lined up for today some really fun questions. And uh, before we get started with today's tutorial, I just wanna let you know, the main focus of this video is to interact and have a social hour with friends. And so uh, I just wanna welcome you to have conversation in the chat box. If you have questions, try to type them in all caps if you can, it makes it easier for me to see. Stitch pennies, I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna put mine together as a quilt, but with each one of the blocks, I try to show it repeated, just like you see on the screen, so that if you wanted to make a quilt with just one quilt block, you could do that. Yeah, if you put your questions in all caps, it's really easy for me to go through the comments and see the questions. Hopefully I don't miss anything. The comments go by so fast, I cannot read all of them, but this evening, I go back and read all of your answers and your conversation, and uh, that has always been something for me to look forward to since we've started this series. Good morning, and if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to play along with the questions down in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you do that. You hit the bell notification and you select all, and then you should get notified when I go live. That's how it's supposed to work anyways. <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't, I don't know why. Yes, and so uh, if you have to leave before we're done today, make sure that you come back and watch the replay because you'll be able to see the block we're doing tomorrow. That's gonna be a fun one too. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, Pamela, I have not made a, a video on face mask. However, I have been working on coming up with a design that works really well for me. 
and something with an adjustable strap and something that's really fast to make. So I do have a face mask that I've been experimenting with since they're saying that they're going to recommend that everybody wear them if you go out. Everybody's been back and forth. You know, that's something. <laughs> wear the mask, don't wear the mask. Only wear the mask if you're sick. The mask help, the mask don't help. It's been back and forth, back and forth. But uh, yes, I've been working on a mask that fits well for my face with the glasses. And uh, I'll probably be making some of those this evening. So it's so great to see everybody. I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen over because I'm hoping that maybe you got all of the measurements uh, yesterday. And uh, let me show you my pieces laid out on the screen or on the table. Michelle, uh, all of the videos, videos one through today, are all in a playlist. And so uh, if you go to Lisa Cape and Quilts, my channel page, and you hit the playlist button, you'll see traditional quilt block tutorials playlist. And then they're all listed in one place. And you could just go from this day one and this video will be added as soon as we're done. But yeah, all of the videos are in one place. Yeah, there is not a shortage of face mask videos. All different types of face masks that fit on your face. I'm probably not making a video for face masks. But I will be making some <laughs> uh, later today. Yes, if you just type in face mask on YouTube, I think uh, everybody has made the face mask video and made several different versions of them. So, yeah, the uh, my glasses with the mask that I've come up with, when I talk, my glasses fog up. If I don't talk... If I'm just breathing like normal, they don't fog up, so. <laughs> All right, so here on the, on the table, I have my pieces, okay? And uh, the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. I have... Uh, my machine already set at a quarter inch seam allowance. The very first thing we're going to do is make our half squared triangles, okay? And we're going to do the same method four at a time. So I'm going to take the two seven by seven inch blocks. You might have these bigger if you're going to trim them down. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make two marks from corner to corner. Oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm going to lay pretty sides together. Here I was thinking we needed eight half square triangles. We only need four. So I'm going to lay both of those blocks, one right on top of the other, pretty sides facing each other. I'm just going to throw a pin right in the middle to keep them both lined up. Uh, I will show you my mask once we're done with the block for today. Before we leave for today, I'll show you what I've come up with so far. And uh, I've been working on it a couple of days, something that was comfortable for me and that I could make pretty quickly. <laughs> so we have our two blocks. We're ready to go to the sewing machine. We're going to sew with a quarter inch seam on all four sides all the way around our block. Oh, let me start with uh, question number one. Growing up as a child, what was your favorite book to read? Your favorite book. I was a big fan of Dr. Seuss books. And uh, so those were my favorites to read growing up as a child. What was your favorite book to read growing up? We 
We did our first seam edge to edge. I'm just going to flip that around and continue on. Seam number two. Seam number three. And seam number four. This way is so fast to make your half square triangles. I love this method for making four at a time. So now we can take that pin out. Now we're gonna make two cuts and we're gonna cut from corner to corner the first way. Then we're gonna spin that around and we're gonna cut corner to corner one more time in the opposite direction. Just like that, we have our half square triangles and I'm gonna press those to the dark side. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these little dog ears. It's so great to see everybody. There's one. Two, three, hello, hi everybody, four. Zella, I'm kind of like you. I was not a huge reader growing up, but the Dr. Seuss books were fun to look at the pages, right? They were fun to look at. <laughs> Now I'm gonna go ahead and give these a press. Again, I'm pressing over to the dark side. I have to wake up my iron. It was gone to sleep. So there's our first one. Our second. Third. And fourth. So here are the half square triangles that make up the maple leaf block. Now that we have those done, let's go ahead and set those aside. I'm going to give you a minute if you're sewing with me live to catch up and get your blocks trimmed and pressed. Trimmed and pressed. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take these two, a three and a half by three and a half, and one green four and a half by four and a half. Those are the pieces we're working with next. Oh, it's so great to see everybody. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday with me. For question number two, if you were told that you had to move to a different state, which state would it be? If you had no choice and you had to move to another state, what choice, what state would it be? For me, uh, even though I, I don't get along well in the cold, 
if I was told I had to move to another state, it would be from Vermont because that's where Harlan's family is. And if I could not live here in Virginia, I would want to live in Vermont. That's where I would move. I don't do well in the cold. <laughs> it would be a winter long quarantine for me. I would, I would have to stay in the whole winter, but that's the state that I would move to. Yep, I'm going to give you a minute to catch up. Four, four and a half by four and a half inch half square triangles. And then the next thing we're going to do is make the stem. Can you believe that these two blocks and this bigger green block is going to make our stem? Y'all remember a few blocks ago, we did a technique called snowball. That's how we're making the stem. I love reading your answers. It has been so much fun. I've had so, so much fun in the evenings sitting down and just reading through all of the different answers. It's been a lot of fun. It's been it's giving me something to look forward to in the evenings. So at this point, you should have your four half square triangles. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our stem. Okay. This block here measures four and a half by four and a half. And then I have two three and a half by three and a half inch blocks. Let's go ahead and take a marker or a pencil, a heat erasing pen, a water soluble marker, whatever you're marking with. That's not going to mess up your fabric. We're going to draw two lines, one on each one of our squares from corner to corner. So there's my first one, and we'll do the same thing on this other block. So just like that, we have our two blocks marked with one single line. We're going to go ahead and line up our blocks to the corner of our green square. Just like this your raw edges should match on the two sides here and your vertical line should be going in this direction and not like this okay if you have it like this go ahead and turn it around thank you so much oh my goodness thank you so much oh my glory thank you so much Okay, focus, Lisa, focus. Your line should be going vertical from side to side. Thank you so much, MS Namito. I know I'm not saying that correctly. I apologize. <laughs> so we're going to do this with one square. We're going to take this to the sewing machine, and you'll be able to see it this time. We're going to stitch right from edge to edge right on that line. Do not add a seam allowance to it. You're stitching directly on the line. So let's do that for our first corner. Right on that line. All right, so here's our first one. I'm gonna go ahead and bring over the second one. I'm gonna just finger press this right out of the way. Okay, you see this little flappy triangle? Let's push it over towards the corner and just hold that there for a minute. I'm gonna bring over our second one and line this one up, matching those raw edges. Your line should be going from side to side. We're going to stitch this one right on the line as well.
that's as complicated as it gets. For our third question for today, what is your favorite kind of sandwich? If you could have any sandwich, what sandwich would you have? So this is where we are. You should have two triangle flaps towards the center of your block. We're gonna trim away this part of the triangle and this part of the triangle with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna line up our stitched line right with the quarter inch line on my ruler and we're gonna trim away all of this extra bit. Just like that. We're gonna flip it around. Let's push these over to the side and we're gonna trim away this part of the triangle. So just like that, we've created our stem because we're gonna take this over to the pressing board and we're gonna press open those two squares nice and flat. I will probably press my seams towards the lighter side just to keep it nice and flat. And there is our stem. See how simple that was? That was pretty simple, right? There we go. I'm gonna give y'all a, a chance to catch up. So at this point, we can get rid of these little extra bits. They're gonna go in my scrap, my scrap basket right there. We should have four half square triangles. We should have our stem block. And then we should have one four and a half by four and a half of our background. And we should have three four and a half by four and a half squares of our maple leaf color. So that's where we're where we are. I'm going to give everybody a chance to catch up. Oh, I love a good Philly. I love a good Philly cheesesteak. Suzanne, HST mean, is an abbreviation for half square triangle. So if you see someone type HST, half square triangle. Ooh, I love Arby's. <laughs> that sounds delicious. BLTs, all oh, those are good too. I love a grilled cheese sandwich. Anitra, you said a quilt sandwich. You're so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Hello, everybody. Hello to everybody who's come in. Uh, if you've missed the very first part of this video and you wanna make the maple leaf block, make sure to come back and watch the replay. Uh, so far it's been super simple and guess what? At this point we're doing a simple nine patch, right? I'm gonna go ahead and lay this block out. So we have Our first block, we're gonna take our background. Make sure that's in the screen, there we go. We're gonna take two of our half square triangles and lay them out just like this. On the next row, we're gonna start with a half square triangle and then we're gonna put two solid leaf blocks in that second row. The third row, we'll start with a half square triangle, another leaf block, 
and our stem block just like this. And this is the layout. I'm gonna give you a minute to go ahead and lay that out. Our, let's see, fourth question of the day. Fourth question of the day. What is the scariest movie that you've ever seen? Scariest movie that you've ever seen. So at this point, I'm going to be doing some chain piecing, right? Here's our block layout. We're going to lay this second block over onto the first one. This is how I usually piece together my nine patches. And we're going to sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Scariest movie you've ever seen. When I was a kid, there was a movie that came out called The Thing. I think that's the name of it, The Thing. I could not stand to watch that movie. It was so scary to me. But now, as an adult, re-watching that movie, I'm like, oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> it's not scary to me anymore. But growing up, it was really scary. So there's our first block. You can pin these if you like. I just usually match up my blocks and then sew the seam. You can also glue baste your seams. I'm a huge fan of glue basting. Usually when I glue baste my patchwork like this, I stay nice and accurate. So there's our pieces. I'm not even going to break the thread. I'm going to start up at this top block and add that one, and you'll be able to see that at the sewing machine. It's going to open up those first two blocks. Make sure this third one's going in the right direction, and then lay it over, match them up, and sew that seam. We'll open up the second pair, just like that. I'm gonna come over here and grab this middle block. Yay, Nadine, you realized how to join the live chat. I'm so happy. We'll add that block. Open up that last pair and add our stem block. Susan, you did not see how to lay out the blocks. Uh, I'm getting ready to show you this block in the different rows, and that should show you the placement for each one of the blocks. And if not, uh, come back and watch on the replay because I'll lay it out for you, and you'll be able to see it again there. But here's our top row, our second row, and our third row just like that.
Susan, I'll leave these here for a second so you can see how to lay out the blocks. Let me go through and see if there's any questions. For our last question of the day, if someone gave you a certificate and then said this is a free shopping spree, there's no limit to your shopping spree, which store would you want that certificate to? Shopping spree certificate, which store would you spend it at? That would be hard for me to pick. <laughs> I'd want to go to a quilt store. I'd want some fabric or some notions or something. But I could think of a couple other stores I wouldn't mind going to as well. Yes, if you were given a free shopping spree certificate, which store would it be for? Ikea. We have an Ikea about 30 minutes away from me and I've never been there. My girls are like, please go to Ikea with us. I haven't been there yet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I've separated the rows. I'm going to give these a press. So there's my first row. Here's my second row. Those seams are going in opposite directions so I can nest those seams up when I piece these two rows together. And at this point, that's all we have left to do, right? I'm going to take this second row and flip it right on to that top row. And we're going to sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Yeah, this block is pretty super duper easy. I could see making several of these blocks at one time, right? And knocking out a quilt with this block pretty quickly. Wouldn't it be fantastic with fall colors? I think that would be stunning. Just matching up my seams as I work my way down. And while we're here at the sewing machine, I'm going to open up these first two rows. And I'm going to bring in this third row. I'm going to lay that right down on the second row, match up those seams. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and piece this row on. Mary, there are all kinds of leaf blocks out there. If you Google 
uh, leaf quilt block, you'll find all kinds of patterns for leaf blocks. Some of the leaf blocks have skinnier stems. There's all kinds of variations out there. There's paper piecing leaf blocks out there, if you like paper piecing. So yes, there's tons of them. This is uh, more of a traditional maple leaf block. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press so we can see it all nice and pretty. Press it from the front real quick. I do have a block lined up called tea leaf. We will be making a tea leaf block coming up soon. And it's a little similar to this, but a little different too. So here is my maple leaf block, all nice and pressed. Celeste, I think that would be awesome. If you were given a certificate and there was no cap to that certificate, yes, I would do the same thing. Get yourself set up with some fabric batting and thread and a mid-arm quilting machine. I think that's awesome. Janelle, uh, I'm not quite sure if you're answering someone else's question or if you are referring to the traditional quilt blocks. I do not claim credits for these blocks. These blocks have been made for years and years. They go back to the very original roots of uh, quilting. And I certainly didn't invent any of these quilt blocks. Uh, I'm just sharing them with you. <laughs> Yes, isn't that pretty? I'm gonna give everybody a second to catch up if you are still attaching your rows or giving those a press. I do have tomorrow's quilt block all lined up and I'll show you those pieces here in just a second. Oh, Janelle, <laughs> your daughter's claiming all of your quilts. That happens, right? As soon as you make a quilt, everybody wants it. Uh, every time I make a new quilt and I show it downstairs, my mom's like, do I get that one? It's like, no, mom, you just got the last one. I love you, mom. <laughs> you just got the last one. She's funny. That happens though, right? Hello everybody. I'm so glad you're spending part of your Sunday with me. Here's the maple leaf block. If you came in halfway or partway through or if you're just now joining in, make sure to catch the replay. We're making really simple half square triangles for this block, four at a time, really simple, fast and easy. And then we're snowballing to create the stem. That's all we did is we snowballed at these two corners. So I'll walk you through on the replay on how to do that. So let me bring you over. I'm going to show you tomorrow's block. Tomorrow's block is called card tricks. Tomorrow's block is also going to be a 12 inch block. 
you're going to need five, five colors for tomorrow, a background color, and then you can switch up the colors. Uh, I'm using colors as a reference, so you can see where those colors go in this block. I have all of the piece counts and sizes for the pieces up on the screen. I'm going to leave this up there because there's quite a few little blocks to write down, right? I also have on the screen what this quilt block would look like if you repeat it as a quilt. There you go. That's pretty fantastic, right? I have never made a card tricks block before. However, I'm thinking I'm going to take some free time this afternoon. So I'm not going to make a practice one. The very first card tricks block that I make, I'll be making with you live tomorrow. <laughs> I will cut out my pieces this afternoon before I finish up today and have those ready. And I'll be sewing my very first card tricks block live with you tomorrow. This will be our 14th block. Can you believe that? 14, two weeks live streaming every day. It's been fun. If you're just coming back and um, if you're just coming into the live, we did some fun questions today. You'll have to catch the replay and then answer down in the comments section. Hello, everybody. Y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. Now, um, I'm going to leave those measurements on the screen. I'm going to take this down. And uh, someone or a couple people asked if I would share what my mask looks like. Just know that uh, I I'm still working on, on my pattern that I'm going to make. And actually, Harlan tried it on, and it was too small. So I have to make some bigger ones for him and my dad. Uh, I do not have a written pattern for this. Uh, I'm not going to be making a mask tutorial. There's thousands of them already out there for every which way that you could make a mask with a filter, without a filter, with the wire and the nose, without the wire, adjustable straps, elastic straps. There's any way you want to make a mask. There's a video out there for it. Uh, what I did is I did use the Pellon fusible interfacing on one side because the latest thing that I saw was that that could be it used as a filter. So let me show you what I have. And y'all, I already know every store is out of elastic. So I've been, I made some bias tape with fabric and it was so stiff that tying it was hard. So I was like, what else could I use? Yarn, right? Yarn. I did put in a little pocket and inserted a pipe cleaner in that so that you could mold this around your nose. And the way that this one works, it does not have pleats. It goes behind your head like this. And then you pull it up like this. I have to put it underneath of my glasses. <laughs> Like that, like that, <laughs> and you tie it behind your head like that. So there we go. And it has the, like that. So that's what I've come up with. I've made like five different ones, but this was the most comfortable for me to wear. And uh, you can wash this and wash it and wash it. You could take the little pipe cleaner out if you wanted to before you wash it. And it went together really fast and I was not having to do any pleats. <laughs> so that was good for me because I tried one with the pleats and I was making a big mess out of it. So that's my mask. <laughs> that's what I'll be making some of these later on today. Yeah, if you put the elastic around the chin, but no one around here has any elastic. So 
I don't have any elastic in my stash. I've never had to use it for anything. So yeah, coming across some elastic would be a little tricky for me. Oh yeah, the straps from hooded sweatshirts. Yeah, you could use that or shoe laces. You could use that. Nadine, you were able to find elastic at Joann's. So that's my mask. Again, I, I do not have a pattern for it. If I perfect it, then I, would, I will offer a free pattern for it, but I'm not going to make a video. There's just so many of them out there, y'all. There are so many videos out there. I'll write down some. It was super duper fast and simple. No pleats. So I'll write down some instructions once I perfect it. If you haven't already made your mask already, then that would be, that would be good. Yes, no quilters elastic. I've never had to use elastic for anything in my studio. Oh, Linda, that's a great idea. Fitted sheets, cut the elastic out. See, y'all are so smart. Y'all are so smart. I used a uh, Pelon P44F. It's the very lightweight fusible interfacing. It's the same interfacing that I use on my t-shirt quilts. From what I've read here lately, because y'all know the mask, there's been so much back and forth about the mask and I don't even want to argue about it. I don't want to debate about it, whether this works or that works. I'm not a doctor. All I know is that now they're saying they recommend that everyone wears them when they go out. So now I got to make some. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Yeah, that's the reason I'm making them. Bungee cords have elastic. Yeah, my hat's off to everyone who have made masks and donated them to, um, to others. Thank you so much for your time, your investment, your skills, and putting those to use. Uh, donating the mask, even if you're selling them. Thank you so much for your hard work and making the mask. And uh, yes, I think that is awesome. Yeah, I don't want to argue whether which mask is the right mask, which way is the right way and the wrong way. Should you wear it? Should you not wear it? That's not for me. I'm a quilter, y'all. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not in the health profession. I don't know what it does and what it doesn't do, and I cannot claim to know anything about that. All I do know is that if they come out and say you have to wear them to go to the store, then my dad's going to have to put one on, right? Or we're going to have to wear one if we want to go down to the food lion. If they say that, then we'll have them. If not, you know, there's a lot of pollen out there, <laughs> right? I don't know. I don't make any medical claims to the mask. Yes, I will say that I have heard predominantly that the cloth face masks do not protect from the virus. I have heard that. Um, I have heard that. So, yes, these are the things that you need for the card tricks block. There's a picture of the card tricks block right there. I cannot wait to make this block with you. I will be doing it for the first time along with you tomorrow. I know it looks a little complicated, right? But I think I'll break it down so that it's not complicated with you. And I will be trying really hard not to mix up my pieces. Because we have several different colors going on tomorrow, right? So I will be adding my maple leaf block up to the design wall as soon as we're done here. 
I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for spending part of your Sunday with me. I hope that maybe you've learned something new today. For many of us, we've done half square triangles and snowballing, and many of you have made the maple leaf block before. But most of all, uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed the conversation and just hanging out with like-minded people and that this video has been a really happy distraction for you today. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to spend some time with you tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to reading all of your answers and conversation this evening from the live chat. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. We're starting a new week, right? All right, everybody. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.